Hi, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you my version of how to make a meatless stuffed pepper. This is a grand opportunity to work some vegetables into the, into the life here. Alright, what I have is about one and three-fourths cups of red beans that I've cooked from dried. You can certainly use canned beans of your choice. I usually use a kidney bean. This is what I happen to have on hand. You could use black beans, whatever kind of beans you want. And I've taken about two-thirds to three-fourths of them and I ground them up in a food processor. And this is kind of an important step because it makes it where it's going to help bind together. I did leave some uh, not ground up so that you could tell what you're eating. Okay, so I'm going to put those in a big bowl. And to that, I'm going to add about a cup and a half of cooked brown rice. Use the rice of your choice. I like brown rice. And again, I like to add whatever vegetables I can. Forgive the glove here. I have a Band-Aid on my hand, so I don't like to work with food with that. I have some zucchini squash here that was frozen about a fourth of a cup. I just chopped it up really small. I like to take this opportunity to add whatever vegetables I can. I've added some frozen chopped kale in the past and that worked out really well. This is one small Roma tomato that I've diced up, small. And now we're going to add some flavoring and you can certainly uh, cut up some onion and garlic and saute it in olive oil until it's translucent. I'm just taking the easy way out on this uh, just because sometimes I opt to do that and I think a lot of people need uh, a quick alternative. This is some dried minced onion, two teaspoons, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now that's not garlic salt, that's garlic powder. And now we're going to add some salt and pepper, and certainly not as much as what's in this bowl here. I'm just going to pinch off some and throw it in there. Not a lot. That's really to your, to your liking, however much you want. Just a little black pepper and salt in there. I have a half a teaspoon of dried basil. I have a teaspoon of dried parsley. And a fourth of a teaspoon of dried oregano get a little bit of this out of the way here and then I'm just going to mix this together for starters that's just for starters then you're going to need your favorite spaghetti sauce of whatever kind it is um, I happen to have some homemade sauce here I'll show you how to make homemade spaghetti sauce in another another video but you can use whatever spaghetti sauce you want and that's going to help to give it moisture and help it help it to actually bind together um, no exact amount here I'm going to say roughly a fourth of a cup to a third of a cup somewhere in there and you can see that as I add the sauce this starts to be able to stick together bind together when this is all big, it is not going to be one tight mass like if you were making stuffed peppers with uh, ground beef. It's going to be a little more crumbly than that. If you wanted it to stick together more and still have no meat in there, you could put a raw egg in here, you know, um, um, scramble it up a little bit, beat it up, and then throw it in here, and that would act as a binding agent. I like it this way because I know that no matter what, if, if I feel like it, I can take a bite of this and there's nothing raw in there that's going to possibly give me salmonella or something like that. Okay, you can see the more sauce I put in there, the more it's starting to bind together. That's exactly what I want. Now I've got two bell peppers here that I've cut the tops off of with a spoon. And now I'm just going to spoon this in here. I'm only going to be making two and I make it certainly looks like I have enough ingredients here for more than two. And it usually winds up that way. It's kind of hard to figure for just two. So you could figure this amount for being really three servings. 
but I'm going to see what I can do with these two peppers. And then once they're stuffed, I'm going to put a little more of this tomato sauce on top and in the casserole as well. And it helps to give some moisture so that these peppers can actually cook down some while they're in the oven. They're going to bake covered at 350 for 45 to 50 minutes, somewhere in there. You just want to make sure that your peppers are completely cooked and not mushy, but just cooked through and that all the ingredients is heated through. You see that I do have some extra left here, enough to stuff a third pepper with, so this is really enough for three. Okay, so now I'm just going to spoon a little bit of this extra sauce on top and then I'm going to put some just right down here. And like I said, this is going to steam with this sauce down here. And when these come out of the oven, you can take this sauce that's in here and use it as a garnish. Put it on top of these after they're baked. And it just makes them so nice. So we're going to cover this up. And what you could do as well, if you wanted to add some Parmesan cheese to this mixture, that would make it taste really well. Or you can save that Parmesan and add it to the top and serve with it at the table. So now I'm going to bake these for, again, uh, 45 to 50 or 55 minutes or so, somewhere in there at 350. And I'll show you what they look like when they're baked. Here's my final product. They have baked for right at 45 minutes and they smell heavenly and they look really, really good and they will make a delicious supper. If you'd like to try this recipe, I have a link on the screen right now where you can download a copy. Let me urge you to give this a try. Let me know in the comments below how it works for you. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Have a wonderful day.